So for this video, which is the start of our higher order functions, we're not going to start by talking about higher order functions. We'll start by setting up some async code that we'll use to demonstrate higher order functions. But we've been writing higher order functions every time you've written a for each. It is a higher order function, so we'll look at those next. But first, I just want to go through this code a little bit um, because uh, I want you to copy over your 14 pub, of course into your week 15 private, uh, create an HOVMD file, and then update that code to now uh, fetch the post. Um, it, you, some of you may have already done this in the week 14 public, so, um, and again, this is just the requirements that we had them um, for last time, so really there's nothing for you to write here. More than anything, just set that up. But what I'm going to do, and then, by the way, you should have already committed that, just what you set up, make sure you have working code there. Now what I want you to, well, now what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to go through my code, and I want you to update your code to match my code. And the reason I'm doing this is for what we're going to do next, and really just to, because it never hurts, having now been through code reviews a couple times, several times, it never hurts to cover some of the fundamentals, okay? So over here is my code, okay? Now I'm gonna again walk you through it in the browser. And the one thing you'll notice is I'm at the end, uh, which is my start, and I'm setting my breakpoint at the only function call that is on global, okay? Which is the start. Everything else is within the block scope except for the URL, okay? So I have minimized the amount of uh, variables I have here set in my breakpoint, and now I'm going to run, I'm going to refresh, because I don't have a form, right, the way I get the code to activate without a form is refreshing the page, and now I'm going to step in. Now notice on my start function, I'm uh, actually declaring a, uh, a named function, and I'm using arrow functions here, and because I'm passing nothing in, right, I'm calling a function, not passing in a parameter to be an argument inside, inside the function I'm just calling another function, which is the get post. So now I'm going to step into get post, which in this case is kind of my big major thing that I'm doing on this page and you'll notice here I have a named function get post and this is different than what we've seen before before when we were writing just regular functions and we said async func and then gave it the name remember now I'm actually wanting you to give uh, declare the name as a const so those functions can't be accidentally overwritten and when you do that when you set its value uh, when it's an async then you put async here I had to remember this because when I first did this I was kind of by nature putting it here and it's like no no because this is actually the function part so it makes sense to put it uh, after the equals. So then because again we're passing nothing into here there's nothing but we do have to because we're passing nothing we still have to put uh, the open and close parentheses uh, and now we're writing an arrow function. Okay so here we have a try catch block so on the try we're going to uh, fetch the URL we're gonna await because remember this is a network call uh, it could take some time, but we want our code to continue to operate uh, unless it needs to wait. And in this case, it does need to wait, but watch what happens. It's fairly quick because we've paused. It almost looks like it's running instantaneously. So now we got actually the request back. And you could look at that request object to see just all the stuff that's in it because there's quite a bit of stuff in there. We haven't even talked about cores, uh, cross-origin and destination errors. Um, so, but in this case, you can look at the response and go, okay, I see a response, but why can't I really see what I want, which is the post? And that's because we have to uh, convert it into JSON. And here's the step where it actually converts it whatever that response object was using JSON, that method. Uh, and again, we it took a little time, so we had to wait for it. And what came back was an array of objects. Okay, look at this, five, a thousand, a thousand, and in this case, post. Okay, so now here's where I um, am doing some error checking here on the return value. 
not not a catch. I showed you the catch on the solution. Here we're saying if data length is if data length. Now, one thing I noticed in doing code reviews is that it was still a bit of a mystery. Matter of fact, I think I already have it in, right here, right? When writing a true or writing a conditional statement, this value, JavaScript evaluates in order to figure out if it's going to run this line, right? Run if this is true. Now what it does is it evaluates the line data dot length. If it's true, I have length and that and in that case it's because it's an array. If it's true that I have data dot length, then it's going to run this. If not, if I don't, and this is what we'll create in a minute just to be clear about what that means and notice also if in this case when I select this a whole thing it's giving me a value of a hundred but when it set when it evaluates it it ultimately has to come down to true or false in order for it to figure out if it runs right now this might look a little funny because we've been writing them like this oh that sees missing right so then this is true so we now we know right so then even though the code says data dot length, right, it's still running because it evaluates this ultimately to be true. All right, and that's where I saw several students when I was asking them about the uh, conditional if statement, you know, understanding what it ultimately is doing. Uh, they could write it because they saw it written, but understanding what it was was a, a little more of a challenge. Okay, so now we're at display post, and and now here the other thing is is that when I called on success, now I probably jumped over that too quick, but you at this point we know the data came back; it's an array of objects. But when I call on success, I'm passing the reference to data here, and and why I'm saying that is here inside the on success I can call this name this whatever I want inside of this block scope okay and the reason I call it post because at this point now I know I'm not just dealing with data I know that those are post and so now I'm gonna call this next function which is display Okay, so make sure your code has these. Again, I, I didn't show the on error today, but have it set up like I have it here, and then uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about right higher order functions. Higher order functions, um, and if you go to Google and you say, what is a higher order function, right? Uh, higher order functions, let's see, I got a better definition the other day. Oh, let's do it in JavaScript, okay, to be specific. In JavaScript, functions can be assigned to a variable in the same way that strings or arrays can. So we can treat functions as we treat other data types, right? And often it's called also first class functions. Right? But a higher order function is a function that accepts a function as a parameter and or returns a function. Okay, so today we're going to talk about higher order functions because they're really useful and we're going to end up using one in our code challenge. But I think it's really good to actually start with one we've already been writing. Okay, so if I'm going to write a for each, okay, so I'm going to, first I have to give it the reference to the array dot for each okay now what am I going to do in here this is the part we call that we've called these callbacks but this is where for each right remember the definition right is a function that accepts a function so this is a method what do we know methods are just functions okay so what happens is the for each is iterating over the array of objects and then what we're going to do is we're going to give a reference to each of those objects and then we'll run some code, uh, we'll run a function. So in this case, right, and this is fairly common where we're passing in post, I'm actually just going to call it instead of post, it's post, the post individual posts themselves. 
okay and then I'm gonna write an arrow function and there is then the function because this method that is a function is accepting a function okay as a parameter so that's what qualifies something as a higher order function when we were writing for loops or writing you know the traditional loops right those were not accepting a function as a parameter so we've been writing them this whole time is my point <laughs> okay so now what are we going to do with it right so now what, what do we want to do with each of them and each time we iterate over and this is where often we start with just saying okay console log the post itself remember I could have named this anything I get to name this what why I would name it post is so that you can clearly see I'm having multiples um, passed in but when I write the for each I'm only looking at individual ones because it's iterating over the array of objects okay so now if I come back to my we refresh here I don't I no longer need to stop it now I can see those individual objects okay so the first function I want you to put in your uh, HOVMD is the for each and I want you to write your understanding of what a for each does okay that's the first thing I want to see so do that uh, have your code like mine right and then uh, I'll put this uh, uh, answer and code updated so in your notes put your understanding because we've been writing for ages but did we add to it or did you ha do you now have a better idea of what a for each function is doing okay and by the way the way we wrote them before was we actually call we reference the index we didn't do that today because we didn't need to right look at this so even the documentation although a little more detailed a little more technical but do that and then we'll move on to the next one